The Great Search, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. DigiKey, thank you so much. More so than ever, The Great Search is now becoming the most this popular segment across all of <laughs> yeah. our shows. Because before, back in the time of plenty, it's like, oh, why do you need to search for anything? You can just find ships everywhere. They grow on trees. Not anymore. So, um, we tweet at us and use like pound the great search um, or at us at Adafruit, whatever, whatever ways, let us know what you're looking for. And we're also out there helping people. And we saw... We see things, we help We things. saw this one. You want to start with the tweet? Yes. So we saw Tobias tweeted uh, in response to Jerry, who, was, who had like a, a headachey gif about like how, you know, she is working on design and can't find a part. And Tobias says, welcome to the club. Um, anyone TPS 27081A uh, for 15 bucks a piece, usually 30 cents a piece. So they're talking about how brokers are, you know, and I've seen this, like some brokers are, are you know, my, what I would call ethical. It's like they'll charge a little bit more because it's rare, but it's, they're not going to charge a ridiculous amount. I like we're, we're not seeing putting 10, people, 20 Yeah, I like not prices. putting people in, you know, you can resist anything from but temptation. Yeah. And so I think right now there's a lot of temptation for a lot of folks who do brokering or parts to charge whatever. No, and, I have to actually redesign a couple and, of boards. It's not a big deal. I'm going to do it anyways. But it's like, okay, I'm not paying $15 for Excel. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've had people quote me like five, six, seven, eight dollars for parts that I'm like, that's a 70 cent part. Like, I can understand like, hey, 50, 50% more, you know, ooh, like I want to make a couple bucks, but I'm not going to pay it. Like if they find someone, great, but I'm not yeah. going to pay it. Okay. So. So what is that? And I'm saying you shouldn't pay either. Instead, you should tag us on social media and we'll find you an alternative we'll find an alternative and that's one thing um just because it's not the same part number that you're used to doesn't mean correct it's and not something that you can sometimes replace. the part number is similar but sometimes it's not as we'll see here so this part is an i squared t power switch normally 35 week lead time out of stock completely and yeah it used to be about 30 cents a piece so let's look at the data sheet and so we can see what we're what we're dealing with here because I've never used this this part. So this is a one to eight, one point two to eight volt, three amp PFET high side low switch with level shift and adjustable slew rate control. So basically, you can use this. There's a VN coming in, and then there's a, a GPIO logic high and low. You can put in a slew rate capacitor here a slew weight resistor here to how much you want to feed this um, this FET and it will turn on. So it's basically like, it's like a PFET, but it's like it's got a little bit extra in it just to make it special. Also, it's 1.2 to 8 volts and 3 amps. Now look, I may not be able to get you the exact same part, but maybe it's within the specifications you need. So let's use, and I want to, I want to highlight, there's a couple things. So there's new up here, right below, not in stock. You can sign up for stock notification where they email you, which, which is, we, we did on Adafruit, so I hope they were inspired by. And also find similar parts, and they tell you how to use the similar parts tool, which I will, which I will tell you as well. So let's look. So um, what do we want? So we want an active part. I don't want to say general purpose because I actually don't know. We do want it with one output because we want it to be pin compatible. We want it to be one to one high side. Um, I think I want the interface to be on off, but I'm not sure. Voltage, I'm not going to select because there might be a wider range or a range that's close enough, so I'm not going to be too specific. Same with the current. You know, I'm not going to be too specific. Um, I do want surface mount, and I do want it to be in SOT236 or TSOT 23.6. So let's view similar. Um, okay, so another thing is down here, these are now, um, all your specifications that you picked are also available down here that you can like turn on or off specific ones or you can delete the whole thing so you can see what, more clearly what you searched for. So let's, we're gonna be very picky. We only want ones in stock. Okay, there's only 13 similar-ish parts. Um, the output type. So let's look at this this chip again to see what is the output type. And it says it's a PFET. Okay, so let's go back here. P channel. Okay, now there's eight. Um, current output. Looks like there's a couple options. Uh, voltage load. I mean, 
I think other than the 5.5, so the 5.5, 2 to 5, I mean, that might be good enough, but um, I'm going to assume that they want, you know, up to 8 volts. That's usually, usually the high limit is what they want. So I'm going to turn those on. Let's look at more filters. Um, okay, so we have actually quite a few options, right? So this, is, this is really good stuff. And a lot of them are in stock. So let's look at, um, they're all on off. So it looks like we have a couple options, a couple different current options. So since we have a couple different current options, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna start getting picky and I'm gonna say the other one with a three amp, I'm gonna assume that the, this person needs something that's about three amps. So I'm gonna pick only 2.8 and 3.3 3 amps. Okay, so here's the two that came up. One is uh, almost the same, 1.8 to 8 volts. Another one is uh, 1 1.5 to 12 volts. They both have an RDS on of about 40 milliohms. Uh, checking this data sheet. Yeah, you know, 40 milliohms or so. That sounds about right. And uh, this one has slew rate control, although I'll say... Sometimes features aren't complete. It depends on the person who entered it in if they like were, you know, they filled in everything. So I always take the features as a grain of salt. I always check the data sheet. And uh, the pinout, the package is the same, which means I can now check if the pinout is the same. So um, these are both pretty cheap. So let's look at the uh, V-shape part first. So the V-shape part. So here's what I always like to see. So the, the application circuit, see this? It's, it's basically the same as this. It's very similar. There's the R1, there's the v, v in, on, off, R2, V in, R1, on, off. What's slew? Slew is, is how fast you want the current to go in. It's a current limiting thing. If something is slewed, it means it's going to slowly ramp up. If you have high slew, it, it spikes up. There's times when you want it to react very fast. You want a lot of current. There's sometimes you want to reduce your inverse current because it could damage your components. You use slew in a sentence like that. What? You use slew in a sentence like, I, I want more slew because, or like, well, oh, last too much week, slew. Well, last week we talked about op amps, and we actually wanted a high slew op amp because we want it to react to volume changes very gotcha. quickly. High slew. High slew. Um, okay, so for this one, you see um, the same pinout, two and three are V out, two and three are V out, and one is the, the bottom of this, uh, looks like, yeah, another MOSFET. So yeah, this one, and then there's a return. This shows the internal resistors, but this looks actually almost identical. I mean, I will tell them, you know, you go and of course check that all the specifications match everything, but this is very, very promising. Um, and there's uh, 12,000 in, in stock. And then um, for this one, and notice that the part numbers are totally, sometimes it's like, oh, an NE555 or TI555 or an LM555. They all have the same part number. They have different prefixes. These have completely different part numbers and prefixes. And that's not, un like, that's not unusual. Don't, it's nice when they are, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad if they're not. It's, it just depends on, yeah, everybody, we're all going to have to adapt at least you gotta for a while. you got to be flexible. Yeah, just because it's okay. not the same part number doesn't mean you can't use it. In fact, that's going to stop a lot of other people from either getting the parts they need or maybe even my, some changes to their design. But you got to be, you, you got to stretch. Yeah, you got to okay. gotta do some flexing. This one also, RDS on, you know, you see the specifications. And then um, you can see down here, again, the same thing. There's an input, two pins on the output. Pin six is, you know, you can connect to a capacitor out here. One is, looks like this one has five. Yeah, one is from the bottom of this FET. Um, five is to the on-off gate, and VN is on pin four. So this is actually one of the times where I'm like, there's actually two looks like good options. Uh, both have about, about 10,000 pieces of our stock in DigiKey right now. And um, they're, they're like 30 cents. 20 cents, even cheaper. So, you know, if you can't get that TI part. Or if you're getting quoted like. Seven bucks. Ten a bucks a part. Don't do it. Don't. There's, look, sometimes I agree. Sometimes there aren't any alternatives. But I'll say something. I've actually, other than very, very specific chips that are like, okay, yes, it's a one-off. Only this company makes this particular microcontroller. 
um, in this package and you need that exact Mac controller, no, then you might, might not be able to get that. But, but analog and linear components and power components, there's probably something out there. There's probably something out there. You're not, yeah. you're not out of luck. Um, there, there's, there's gold at the end of the rainbow. So that's the great search. So check it out. Send us your uh, great crises, your, your bill material crises, and we'll help fix them.